Good afternoon and welcome back to Netroots Nation Live. I am now sitting here with the lovely Stephen Schifferman <laughs> um, from um, Basic Income Network. Yeah. Networks. Uh, I talked with I talked with Stephen last year about yes. uh, basic income, and we're here to do a follow up because uh, unit, uh, basic income has now become a focal um, in in the upcoming uh, in the candidates race. About yes, it has. Basic with more people touting um, the 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 benefits of such a of such of something as such as that. So welcome back to Netroots Thank Nation. Thank you very much, Kelly. Netroots Nation Live here on Netroots Radio. Fun to be um, here. Thank you. It's fun to have you back here. Um, in the uh, uh, intervening years since we spoke, there's been a surge of interest in universal ba- uh, basic income. How has that um, affected um, your work? Oh, uh, the basic income movement has been a kind of roller coaster on a general upward trajectory for a long time and this past year has seen a major breakthrough thanks in large part to Andrew Yang's campaign Uh, a year ago his book was published and he had announced that he was going to run uh, but he was just launching the campaign and not getting any traction yet and here at Netroots especially almost everyone I meet has heard of basic income and many people immediately mention Yang and ask me about his campaign. And that's not just true here at Netroots among knowledgeable progressive activists. I find it's true most everywhere I go. So, um, with, the, with the work that you are doing and um, the intersection of Yang's book and his candidacy, um, how are you... Are you working uh, with the, the Yang campaign? Or, uh, or somewhat. I've somewhat. met with him a few times. I've met with his campaign staff. Um, but my focus on basic income is much broader than the Yang campaign. And I've been working on this issue for more than 20 years and have a new book that will be published later this fall. And... My goal is to get some version of basic income into the Democratic Party platform and yeah. into the political discourse even more generally than that. So, so uh, the book that so your upcoming book is a follow-up or a continuation. It's a rewrite. A rewrite update. Yeah. Yes. Um, um, and this time I've got a very good publisher behind it. Awesome. So, you, so you're not self-publishing. Right. Publish, I uh, sell, so I self-published a book two years ago. Yeah. Uh, while working out some of the ideas and the ways of presenting and uh, signed a contract two months ago with a very good publisher and I've got a terrific editor and we hope to have it out by the end of the year. Unfortunately, we haven't yet agreed on the title. <laughs> so I can't make that announcement oh, okay. here um, today. But just for general information, we can, we'll do this now, we'll do this at the end. Um, you, for those of you that need more information... Uh, you can go to basic income. Um, I don't have a regular website or okay. organization at the moment. We tried to launch an organization that never <laughs> quite came together. Do you have a blog or someplace? Where I'm people can, getting or, ready to a, a start face, a blog. A Facebook? I've been avoid. I've, I've been so focused on Twitter? writing and rewriting oh, the okay. book <laughs> that I've been neglecting all of that, and we'll be talking okay, with yes. the publisher and the marketing yeah, people, yeah. but. Uh, the but where publisher. Can, but, but where can they go in the meantime for them to get more information? Uh, there's be? a lot of information about basic income. Uh, our national group is the U.S. Basic Income Guarantee Network, usbig.net. Okay. Okay. There's an international group, basicincome.org, uh, which is the Basic Income Earth Network. And their website has updates about basic income ideas and activities and debates in countries around the world and this idea truly is international gaining rapid traction in many countries well about talk about um i'm interested in hearing i talked with um conrad shaw who has yes. a documentary of bootstraps um talk a bit about how you see and we just he talked about how their uh exper- their their yeah. um, qualitative experiment in basic income was being um, conducted. How do you see um, the effect 
of uh, the impact of a basic uni- of a universal basic income for Americans? Uh, well, the important point is that it's truly universal. And one of the missing factors in most political discourse is that Americans today simply do not trust our government. And we've been systematically turned off and turned away from our government by the Republican conservative discourse and by the terminal timidity of the Democratic Party over recent years or decades. And my starting point, I come to the issue of basic income as a philosopher. And so I'm very attentive to the underlying issues and the way we express issues. And so I start with the core values of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. In a market society such as ours, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness requires that everyone have at least some income for food and shelter and other necessities. Yes, yeah. And so basic income, as I present it, is really a way to fulfill the vision of America's founders and to create something more like a true democracy. And it also falls under the preamble of the Constitution to promote the general welfare. Yes. So, you know, and we forget, we so forget about the preamble uh, to the Constitution, which lays out what the vision is of yes. what, the, what the nation is to be. And, you know, um, you know, to promote the general welfare, to provide for the common defense, defense a more perfect uh, union, ensure the, domestic the tranquility, tranquility establish justice. And you can't do that if you have inequality. That's exactly right. You know, there's, you know, and on the general welfare specifically, yeah. I'm, our government, in my view, in the view of many even people, as it goes, they're anti-union, period, even but, anti-union yeah. as far as it relates to America. Yeah, even more fundamentally, yeah. I'm, what is the general welfare? And how is the, can we best promote that? Yeah. And I'm saying that it provide every adult citizen with a basic income. Because that and money we, goes back into the economy. It just keeps reaching, you know. And it's not just the money going back into the economy. It's the monthly reminder to everyone that we are citizens, that in some ways we yeah. are equal, that we all, therefore, have an immediate stake and have the means to participate yeah. as active citizens. You know, it's... it's um, because there's a lot, there is a lot of apathy. Yes. You know, and I think that is, you know, and you know, we talk about voter suppression and all this, but it has more to do with with apathy, and the suppression is just an icing on that apathy. Yeah, and the apathy is cultivated. Yes. I'm, it's a, actually a rational response to the failures of our political system. Too many of us have been so turned off and turned yeah. away for so long that it makes sense to stop caring and to withdraw. And what we need now, however, is to engage people directly, immediately, personally, and I'm proposing that basic income is the now, way to do that. I know there there is like opposition to this, and I, I'm just very curious to hear what negatives you have heard about it you know outside well. of the oh people become lazy they love it. it's welfare <laughs> we already give people a basic income it's called welfare yes and no yeah. that's yes, definitely and. not um, my real passion for all of my time working on basic income has been how to communicate these ideas clearly and directly to regular folks to cut through that nonsense yeah. and to avoid the knee-jerk responses and objections. How you frame it to the people you, you are f- speaking with. And you know. especially to the people who identify as conservatives or libertarians or non-voters yeah. or Trump voters oh, yeah. and to make the idea personal. But so what would you do? What would it mean for you? If you had a basic income. If I had a basic income, I would be able to actually pursue my theater career, my acting career. Yeah. Because I wouldn't have to worry about, you know, I, you know, being semi-retired with a, actually a pittance of Social Security because I am so attention deficit I have never been able to hold a job long enough that <laughs> paid enough. And you raise an important point about Social Security. You know, um, I'm basic income is like I Social Security. I get 600 bucks a month because... 
of my job history. I've never been able, if I had been in the wherewithal to sit behind a desk and work in an office, I, I would have, or been better at math, I would have had a career in the Air Force. Um, they wanted me to go in as a navigator, but I have a learning disability in mathematics. Well, basic, basic income is on top of Social Security. In, but and as, we should have a basic income before we try to reform know, and Social I am Security. On a housing subsidy, and, because, and my rent went up because I'm happily making, at this point, more money than I've ever made, but my Social Security check pays my rent. And, that doesn't, and then what I make for my two-day-a-week job, which I am missing work this weekend to be here. <laughs> I have to pay my my, my, so, my I have other bills to pay, so I have no money. So to do this what is I need the kind do. of response that I get from almost everyone. Obviously, your situation is unique. Everyone's situation is unique. But I can talk to situation as other people. Just that my we, jo my job situation yes. is different. And so some of us would want to pursue an artistic career and be performing, and some would want to be full time parents, and some would want to be Go entrepreneurs. Back to go back to school, and the important point with basic income is that it directly gives power back to the individual. It allows you to go forward and do, you know, and it, even if it's a, a, a minimal goal, it allows you to achieve that because... Right. It's a secure floor that you can stand yeah. on while making good choices for yourself and your family and your future. Yeah, and I, you know... And again, you've got the libertarian. You know, we went through the conservative. Oh, but like, well, you have the libertarians going. Oh, but free market. Well, let the market decide. Yeah, the market's decided, and it hates our guts. Yes, but that term again. I come to this as a philosopher, yes. and that term, the market, is very tricky and dangerous. Or the free market is very tricky. Well, or the at, economy. They're coming at the market economy, whatever, from the Ayn Rand point of view. Yeah, and I'm saying that no. We are the market. Yes. Markets are composed of individuals and our personal choices and what's been dysfunctional in our society. I mean, we society. spend our money in, in the market. You spend your money on shit that nobody else <laughs> that, you know, doesn't really satisfy well, you and doesn't support the market. And again, the market. as a philosopher, yes. I'm very careful about the language that I use because I want to engage everyone. Well, so I, my, yes, but yeah. you, you, you frame it differently than I just framed it. Yeah. But I can hear and people saying that. And my point is, it's not me versus you or us versus them. It's yeah. all of us together as citizens. And basic income is an idea that can and does and yeah. really should attract support from across the political spectrum and across the socioeconomic spectrum. Because yeah. CEOs, even the super rich, have kids and grandkids and they want this better world for the future. They, all of us have to breathe. All of us need clean water. Oh, and but, Hershey, but, but the head of Nestle says that, we're, that they should be in charge of, of providing us water because yes, well, we what, human beings are not, because only the corporations Yes, can. well, what people say is, has to be challenged with real facts and real logic. And this is the fundamental pathology of, so how do for you decades now. In, in framing it for the corporations who obviously won't like this. Well, the corporations may not like it, but corporations are not people, and they're not citizens, you, and they don't vote. But they don't vote, but they are the money. They are the money behind well, it. Well, we they have to corruption. take that That's back. That's what I'm saying. How we, it, but it, again, it boils down to, as a philosopher, you know how to frame it for them. That's exactly right. So you can say, well, look, if this happens, they can spend their money on your product. Well, yes, and that's absolutely true. And by the real problems in our economy for the last decade or, or more is lack of demand. And the way to create demand is to ensure that people have some money and poor and working folks will spend their basic income on necessities, will invest it in improving their quality of life, and so they will buy products that serve their and interests. And you don't have to, won't have to charge 20 bucks a head for a movie. Right. <laughs> well, and it's about... You so know, it really comes back to yeah. questions of power, and that's yeah. why Netroots Nation is a good place awesome. to have I these mean, conversations. I mean, and I look forward to it because I get to see people like you, you know, all the time <laughs> and go, hey, go, let's play Devil's Advocate and see what I can, how I can like, elicit stuff, you know. But it all boils down to, again, um, framing it in such a way that the people you are talking to will understand it and will walk into your frame and accept it. 
Yes. And that's the whole, and that's, and a, that, and that's something that the, the right wing has been able to do, the, been able to, pro, you know, they've taken the art of linguistic manipulation and studied it. And that's why, that's why that's Thwimp is so successful. He understands how to manipulate language and frame things or, or um, get people to step into his frame and become yes. the censor. And that's exactly what I've been focusing on finding ways to do from the progressive side on the issue of basic income. So do you have a, a, a favorite philosopher? Do I have a favorite philosopher? Spinoza. <laughs> Spinoza, <laughs> But we forget that America was founded by Enlightenment philosophers. Jefferson, Adams, Franklin, Franklin. they were steeped in the philosophy of Spinoza and Locke and Montesquieu yeah. and Rousseau. They knew that thinking. Yeah. And the idea of life, liberty, and the pursuit was, of happiness of comes that. from John Locke. And, and the idea of nature and nature's God comes from Spinoza. And the whole thing is that, too, we are pulling back from that enlightenment. Oh, more than pulling back. We have sh shut it out and shut it aside. Because, and educate, what because we've just had, being a high school graduate makes you elite. Sadly. You know, and I'm saying that because some of the smartest people I've, I know are high school graduates. You know, no. they didn't need to go to college because they had this. They have an innate knowledge. And some of the stupidest people, people have, have PhDs been. because they've learned very abstract, artificial, disassociated ways of using language. Well, not so much that they've never. You can use disassociated. I mean, take a look at Thwimp. He uses disassociated language <laughs> all the time, but he's still able to communicate what he's saying. Yeah. Um, but, it's but, not, it's knowing, but it's knowing. But it's it's using. Being able to express it, you know, just, you know, um, and we're going on my ADHD path here. <laughs> because language is important when you're trying to language. present um, radical ideas to people that are like going, that are and like, go, that you can't see what I'm doing, but I'm doing the, the sort of like, oh, wow, huh? You know, the pull, the pullback saying this is, this is, a scary, and that's this is scary, frightening. One of I don't, the yeah. challenges that I've been dealing with very directly for a long time in writing this new book is how to keep people present and focused and how to cut through the knee-jerk objections the responses about oh people are lazy oh they'll just be drug addicts oh it's well, redistribution it's oh be... it's socialism well then you mm -hmm. ask them if they like uh, their public transit yeah. that's socialism do you use public roads do you ever you rely like on the police. Police, your fire, your first responders. And again, and then, and then they say, "Oh, but socialized medicine." You look at them. We already have it. It's called the emergency room, or the VA, or Medicare. And so, I your specifically security. avoid those terms, socialism and capitalism, yeah, except to debunk them, because yeah. the current discourse has been so corrupted and degraded. Exactly, and that's what I'm saying. With, with language and, and framing, you have to, f because though you already know how people are come, going to be coming at you. Yes. So you just need to listen to that and reframe their statements. That, and that's exactly what I do with, in the new book, is it's a systematic reframing of all those knee-jerk objections. Well, oh, awesome. Um, yeah. And with the goal always of helping people see this issue more clearly and think about their Again, immediate lives more Directly and functionally. And in language they understand. Yes, indeed. Yeah, to yeah. make it personal, to make it concrete, to make it immediate. To say, what would it mean for you and your family if we had a basic income? And by the way, we can have a more responsive and effective government. I, we can yeah. eliminate a lot of the waste and excess and abuses. Yeah. And if you're framing it that way, they're going to say, ooh, I like that. Um... They won't have to work a second job because if well, wages had kept up with inflation the way corporate profits did, we wouldn't be in this situation. That's correct. Well, basic income would not be a necessity for. That's you know, also true, but. I mean, we it still will still be a necessity for the people who are in any way yes. marginalized. I mean, we still may. I mean, we still may have ended up where we are now in a quasi-oligarchical, plutocratic um, <laughs> form of governing. <laughs> But it still would be, but even, you know, everybody would be a bit of a plutocrat. Yes, and that's exactly right. And to empower people to, well, not be plutocrats, but to be full citizens. Well, 
I'm, I'm uh, using that in the term of, of it relating to the god Plutus being the blind god of wealth <laughs> and, not See, knowing, and not knowing if the person be getting the wealth bestowed upon them is uh, deserving. And I'm not. saying that we have to share the wealth and make sure That's that what, everyone yeah. has a share. Deserving or not deserving. You know, right. we have to and get rid of that. Get the rid concept. of that invidious distinction between uh, who is deserving. That Victorian um, right. distinction of deserving poor and the undeserving poor. The deserving poor were the people who were working just trying to make ends meet. And the undeserving poor were the people that, for whatever reason, choose not to or could not work. Yes. And the fact, again, is if we're really talking about the enlightenment ideals and the principles of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness Promoting as unalienable welfare. rights, unalienable yeah, rights right. means entitlements endowed by our creator. Yes. And so our society has a duty and if to in provide something like a basic income. And if we go back to the Levitical law, which some <laughs> fundamentalists will say, oh, Jesus fulfilled all of that, it speaks about the fact that w there is a requirement, an obligation for the entire community to, to be cared for. Absolutely. And in biblical times and indeed throughout almost all of human history, people l interacted in, daily with our neighbors and we had an immediate sense of responsibility. Really, until the industrial age that yes. that changed. Yeah. And if you did, if, well, if, you, if the, if the machine put you out of work, tough shit. We don't. You're you're useless. to you know this crap. And in. we have to realize there are no useless people, yeah. and every person has dignity. And in a healthy society, we have to actively work to ensure that every citizen is included. Yeah. For us and our posterity. For ourselves and our posterity. Yeah. Absolutely. I, you know, and I th I think of people. Um, looked past the three words of the preamble, which we, I love going back to, we the people, which has also been now corrupted. And you read the well, whole thing. And that's the, one of the core issues is we overlook the different meanings of the word we. Too often politicians and plutocrats use the word we as an assertion or an assumption without bothering to ask who specifically well, is that we? Well, at that time, it was specifically landed, landed yes. Europe. Well, and Euro I'm saying landed, uh, landed, landed men of British descent. Yes, and we need to reclaim the we and ensure that everyone is included Which, and feels included and has opportunities to speak up and say no. Which is interesting because. Going back to that, well, it, they focus it initially on themselves. As they go further into that preamble, it expands. Because mm -hmm. you can't provide for the general welfare if you're not providing for us and our posterity if, and provide for the general welfare if, if you're not providing for everybody to ensure the domestic tranquility. So it starts out very narrow. The preamble starts out very, very narrow. And as you read it, it becomes a, a broader... Yeah, you, you and know, it starts out. And I've put a lot of thought into that. And Actually, I, just on that. I have a chapter in the new book that uses the structure of the preamble to suggest that basic income is a simple, direct way of fulfilling all of those injunctions. But I see it as a river, as a river flowing. That's very nice. You know, starting out as 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 like a creek, and then as it goes, you know, or as a rivulet, and then go, and then a creek. <laughs> And then as it flows, it flows into a river, and then, it, yes. and then by the time you get to the end, it's a delta. <laughs> a That's fertile, very nice. A fertile delta. For ourselves and, and our posterity, posterity is the final phrase. Yes. And another piece of the declaration is the final statement is we pledge to ourselves... Uh, uh, yeah, our... We um, our wealth and our sacred honor. Yes, our yeah. lives, our fortunes. Our we mutually pledge to one another our all, lives, our and fortunes, they, and they, our sacred they, honor. You know, and we need to look and back and say these people, these men and women, put everything on the line. Yes, they did. They put their asses. They put their money. They put their money where their. They put their money where their mouth was. And when they wrote that, they all knew that if captured by the British, they would, they would have been executed. Yep. Yeah. And so I'm saying that and now if we up, we commit to, to yeah. uh, creating a basic yes. income in a more just, sustainable society, yeah. we will all be honored. Yeah, exactly. And on that, I very say good. thank you, Stephen. This has been great fun, Kelly. It was great, great fun. fun. Thank you very much. Um,
Can't wait to hear when the...